Question, question number two. Ma order. 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 I, if the members want order, if the members want to have a discussion, go into the lobbies and do so. Question number two, Madame Fox. Uh, my question is to the Minister for the Environment. Uh, how do Manafakahono Arohe agreements strengthen iwi participation under the Resource Legislation Amendment Bill? Uh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Well, they will enable iwi to be able to better participate in resource management processes and ensure their perspective is heard and understood. Uh, some councils already have these agreements and they have proved to work well. These proposals have been approved as a consequence of input from the Māori Party, from the Iwi Leaders Group, and they were widely supported by councils in their submissions on the bill. The Māori Party should be rightly proud of this achievement. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Madam Fox. Uh, does he agree with the Green Seat of Matidia today that the democratic rights of New Zealanders to have their say over the environment will be undermined? And if not, why not? Oh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Nixon. Uh, no, I strongly disagree. We need resource management laws that do enable people to have a say, but it is also undemocratic to have outdated plans that result in environmental problems being ignored housing development stalled when communities need more homes, and opportunities for employment and development held back for years from protracted bureaucracy. I also believe reforms like the new collaborative planning processes in the bill actually provides for a more effective way for New Zealanders to have a say and be involved in resource decision-making without the divisive, litigious and expensive processes of the current Act. Supplementary. Uh, supplementary question, Mika Faitari. Uh, to the Minister, what mana enhancing gains will iwi receive given the powers of the Minister to override plans and consents, to limit right of participation and to curtail appeal rights of adversely affected private parties, councils, communities and the environment? Oh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, members opposite may think that a bill that enables us to have a national rule to fence stock out of streams is somehow an overruling of councils and all sorts of other extravagant claims. Actually, it's about making sure we better manage our environment and we have cleaner rivers and streams. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Madam Fox. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, to the Minister, how are the rights and interests of iwi and all of Aotearoa protected under the resource management proposals? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Well, the Maori Party has made strong representations around some of the provisions in the bill. They were also raised by submitters, such as the Section 360 regula regulating making powers. These provisions have been refined down to just one area, from the four that were proposed, and to where Council's RMA rules duplicate or regulate, repeat regulations under other acts. These regulations will also be subject to full public consultation and a Section 32 analysis. We have also, in response to concerns from the Maori Party, restored appeal rights to the Environment Court in respect of those consents around water takes and water discharges that were of concern to their party. Supplementary. Uh, supplementary question, the Right Honourable Winston yes. Peters. Uh, Minister, how can he possibly reconcile his dire warnings about being brown mailed in the RMA in December 2004 this with his divisive separatist and race-based bill that stands before the House today, which will do nothing for New Zealanders, and for that matter, 99% of Māori, apart from her elite mates. Order. The Honourable Doctor... Well, the irony of that question is that the New Zealand First Party voted for changes to the RMA under the last government that increased the obligations on councils to consult iwi. Now, what we are doing with the amendments in this bill is actually making those processes more workable and practical so there aren't the costs and the delays that have frustrated average New Zealanders. Entry. Order. 
Supplementary question, Sarah Dowry. Uh, to the Minister, how will the new planning standards proposed under the Reform Bill help reduce the complexity and bureaucracy of the current Resource Management Act? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Mr Smith. Speaker, current Council planning documents stand taller than this chamber at 10 metres tall and consist of 80,000 pages of policies and rules. We've got 50 different ways across New Zealand that you measure the height of a building. We've got over 200 different definitions of what you can do in a commercial zone. Environment court decisions have got limited precedent value because they only actually apply to a single council's plan. The new planning standards will hugely shrink this excessive and costly bureaucracy. The law requires common format, common definitions and standard zonings while allowing councils to make the decision as to what areas those zonings will apply in their district. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Sarah Dowie. Uh, how will the reforms reduce the number of consents that are required, noting the OECD's conclusions that New Zealand's system of environmental regulation makes too little use of national standards and relies on too many discretionary consents? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Mr. Speaker, the bill and the associated national policies and standards will significantly reduce the number of consents that are required. For example, our national environment standard in areas like telecommunications facilities, pest control and forestry are expected to reduce the number of consents each year by thousands and save millions of dollars in compliance costs. The bill also introduces two mechanisms to reduce the need for consents. Consents councils will now have the discretion to waive the need for a consent for a mining activity nor will a consent be required, for instance, to build a deck that breaches, uh, for instance, infringement uh, boundary rules, uh, provided that the relevant neighbour has agreed. They are the sorts of pragmatic changes that I think New Zealanders are looking for. A supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. If this bill is so wonderful, why is it that virtually every submitter, including Todd Properties and Fulton Hogan, as well as councils and environmental NGOs, say farther, rather than making the bills, the RMA, simpler, it's going to increase its complexity, increase costs, and have worse outcomes? Oh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Doctor. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the member grossly misrepresents the submissions that have been made to the Select Committee. When you've got a bill. That's over 200 pages long that makes more than 40 changes. Of course, there will be some submitters on some parts. How many member, how many submissions opposed planning standards? How many opposed national rules to getting stock out of streams? How many opposed councils having the discreet uh, discretion to be able to waive need for consents? The answer is on all the substantive proposals in this bill is they have very wide support. Order. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, if the Minister is so confident... Order, is, this, is this a point of order or something? No, it's a question, sir. Uh, yeah. Then address it. Yep. Mr Speaker, yep. my question is, yep. if, this bill, uh, is, is, <laughs> if this bill is so good and these things are so uncomplicated, why is it that his own department was unable to provide a report to the Select Committee and the Select Committee unable to provide advice to PCO for five months after submissions closed? Mr Speaker. Order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, this bill had 800 submissions that were heard Order. through to June. The department provided its first 150-page report in August, another 500-page report last week, because members on this side of the House are serious about getting resource management law right. Members opposite whinge about the REMA, but every time this government comes to the House with a substantive re reform bill to fix the problems, they oppose it. Order. Order. 